This is the smart lock. This is the lock where you can not only use a manual key in the back to open your tailgate, and you can also use your key fob to open your tailgate. It's, uh, as you see there, model PL8660. I'm installing it on a 2007 Honda Ridgeline. Um, it's, they do pretty good on the instructions, but really where they start lacking is how much stuff you really have to take apart. Uh, the tail assembly is pretty easy. I mean, you take the top ridge off here, Go ahead and buy your 18 clips because they will break. And at a dealership, they're about $4 a pop. So they get kind of expensive. You can buy them off eBay from China for about 65 cents, but be prepared to wait for about two weeks, three weeks delivery time. Once you get the tailgate, you got to take off the back assembly with a bunch of different screws. They show you that pretty clearly. So basically, you install the drill the hole here and the two screws, and then you put the actual back plate on it, which winds up being a pretty nice install. What it does is it makes the handle at one point inoperable. When you pull it, it doesn't move any linkages inside. When you turn it the other way, it makes it where the handle actually engages the linkages and opens the tailgate for you. I have it in an engaged spot, of course. Uh, all that does is really move this hand here, and when it moves it all the way to this direction, as you can see, this mechanism gets to this part of the handle. It also locks this part here, which between the, this part and this part, this one makes it where you can't use your handle underneath your tailgate. This one makes it where you can't use your handle for your tailgate. Now wiring, you gotta take your wiring for this electric solenoid that you have, bring it up. Uh, in the video that they show installing, I didn't have that wire, so I used zip ties and went through and made it real nice. Now here's the part where they get where they don't tell you about what you have to do. Okay, one of the things you have to snake your wire down in this area here. Don't know if there's plenty of light, but we'll see. Uh, you have to remove your tail light assembly on this side. Simple enough, two bolts, it comes out. But to get the wire up to the cabin, the one firewall and all that plug that they talk about, they're talking about on the inside. Basically, you have to remove your back fiberglass plate back here with those six bolts up there. On this left side, you have to remove your anchor and your, I think it's like six bolts here and your light. Your wiring harness is up underneath this fiberglass, all the way to the front. And your wire, and it's up through there. There's a small hole that you have to go through. Now, you wanna go ahead and go around the other side and we can video show you that. Okay. Now let's take you on the inside. To get to this weather plug, that, to get to the weather plug that they're talking about, this is how much stuff you have to take apart. Ah, oh, it doesn't look like a lot, does it? I took out the back seats, I took out the back floor seats, now all the molding that goes through here, and then when you look, angle it, when you look at it, you keep going. Inside this little hole, there's that little black grommet right there. That's the weather stripping that you'll be going through on the back side. Once you get through there, then you can chase the wiring harness that they keep talking about in those instructions, but don't give you much information about. You can take that and chase that all the way up to your kick panel. But you must take out several screws. The seat belts have to be undone. Um, there's a lot more work than they make it out to be. So that's a you know first thought. Uh, one of the things you can think about is there's a couple of videos online on how to fix the, uh, the pulley system on the seats. And they tell you how to take out the seats. It tells you how to take out the trim work. Excellent video. Uh, some excellent information on there. And that will describe what you need to do to be able to get the seats out so you can actually start accessing. Uh, this panel here was a little bit of a pain. There is a hidden screw up in here that's a body clip. Real tight, so it's hard to get to. Um, I'll do some more once we get to the back area. Okay, as you can see, I've taken off the six bolts and now exposed the back area. The wire molding will be over on this left side behind this uh, panel here. But in order to get to that panel, you have to take that wire or that back panel off. Also, it helps take this panel off here on the side. Besides undoing the screws, the six screws here, and your anchors, you have to remove your top bed cap. For that, this last bed cap, or last is a fake. Screwdriver goes in here, you pop it out, undo the screw. This whole mechanism slides back easily. Just, just give it a quick yank and then lift up. It's like kind of like a T-groove with a plug that goes into it and slides and locks in place. And when you pull it forward, it just pops. You should be able to pull it up. That'll make that this side frame come easy. And then you'll have access to all of your uh, uh, wiring harness that they speak of in the instructions. But, you know, they don't show you this because, you know, you probably wouldn't buy it if you knew you had to do this much work. Okay, I wanted to show you. 
Now, now you get the wires zip tied through here. You want it to kind of travel through around there and down in this groove. When you take out these two bolts here, your light, your uh, back tail light will come out. Now, you want to keep your plug somewhere kind of close to your uh, tailgate. You know, the plug that is connected to that wire. So that in case you ever have to take off your tailgate accident or whatever, they can easily get to it and take it off. So my thought is here, I'm going to zip tie this all up nice and neat. Put it down in this cubby hole down here where the um, um, license or the tail light goes. And I'll be plugging this side in. That way the waterproof connection is behind the tail light up underneath there. And then uh, you'll see the wire goes through this hole, which takes you right to that frame spot there. Now all you're going to do is zip tie the wire nicely all the way up to that front spot where the little black hole is up there. That's your little gasket. That's your firewall. You can put a little small hole and feed the wire through and then you can zip tie it all the way up to the inside. Uh, I'll show you that here in a little bit. Okay, so now that I got all this done, the wire comes in. I got the 3M tape. It goes behind and the plug is behind the, the actual back tail light comes underneath of the and underneath the body and then through the housing. You can see the wire I got it zip tied to the main wiring harness, followed all the way up to the uh, grommet. Be careful about this grommet here because it is kind of fragile. I mean, it's not a real flexible plastic. I tore the outer edge with my fingernail. I just cut through it like it was butter. So you kind of want to be careful about it. Don't pull too hard. You might rip on, rip it. I drilled a small hole. I used a 1164 uh, bit which is rather tight, but that allows for, I mean, it's so tight it doesn't, you can wiggle the wire, but you don't see any line around it. That'll keep it uh, water sealed, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. Plus, it's behind all the fiberglass. Now, I'll just uh, go ahead and go in the front part and put all the wiring down, zip tie it all, and bring it up to the front to do the wire clips. Uh, the reinstalling of this panel over here on the side is going to be a pain. I tell you, it, it got hung up in two places. Down here, it's got a little lip that goes into uh, right in that crevice. That makes it really difficult to get out. And up here, this the, the actual molding here goes over top of this. It does the same thing underneath of this part here. It goes over top of it. That was actually kind of a pain to remove too. A lot of wiggling and kind of being gently forceful. Um, forceful enough to get it done, gentle enough to hopefully not break it. So that that is a difficult spot. Oh, and as I talked about earlier, on the, uh, the side rail here, you take the one screw off, which comes out here. And all it is is got like a T plug that goes down and pushes four locks in place. So all you have to do is push it back, what's that, a half inch, three quarters of an inch back, and then just lift it up and it'll, you know, lightly jiggle it and it'll come up. Uh, so there you go. Okay, so your wire comes through that grommet back there inside that little hole, comes out, traces down. Now you file the harness here so you can avoid your seat belt mechanism. Come down, zip tie through there. Now when it came to this, I did undo here, but to undo all this plastic molding, I just tucked it up underneath there. It looked okay. Now to come around the front side, the front side, same thing, came back out of the plastic molding. This was kind of a, a difficult area to actually get the wire to tuck underneath it. It's really tight. Um, bringing the along the main wiring harness, came all the way up, and then you can see right here is the yellow with the green stripe, yellow with the black stripe. On mine, if you hook the blue wire up to the yellow with green stripe, and you hook the green wire up to the yellow with black stripe, it made the door function properly, or the, the locking mechanism uh, function properly, without having to do it. So when I hit unlock, it locks, and vice versa. Uh, yours may vary, but that's I got lucky the first time I hooked it up, it was right. Um, I traced the wire, folded the excess up in here, went to the back, and zip tied it up to the top. This is kind of tight right here, so I had to undo some electrical tape. These companies really want to save every bit of copper so that you don't throw an extra inch anywhere. So that was kind of hard to get into, but it's done, and I'll show you here how it works. Okay, as you can see, all the stuff's installed, the wiring's all done, and you want to test this, of course, before you ever start buttoning any of this stuff up. But with all the doors shut, my lock button, and then the unlock button. Everything functions just like it's supposed to. Functions so that's how you install it. The hard part now is trying putting everything back together and making sure you don't break anything. So that's the install. Let's see how it looks like when I get done buttoning everything up.